camera setting key. This way, you don't have so many variables in this list, and you can have all your settings in this list instead. So you can add, when you want more key settings, you just add them all here. This helps because it prevents you from making duplicate settings if you have a lot of settings or something like that. You have them all in one place, easy to change, and so on. Section, once again, variable my section and not lost open bank, variable player bank, and player ID. Now we just have to copy this line up to and three. All right, since we have to store this as an integer, we can't load it directly out again. So we have to do a switch again when we load it back out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one and we call, call it load camera setting. And what we're going to switch on then is go here to bank. You can see here load integer value key, we use the same bank key, section, same section, and bank, once again, player ID, there we go, and if it is 1, I'm just going to delete other ones, for now, if it's 1, then we set the um, set variable, our camera state for player, one was normal as far as I r recall, two was far and three was close, so we just copy this one up, two is far, and three is close. All right, so this is how you would store a preset in a bank. You will have to decode and or encode it to a integer or something, and then decode it again once you pull it out. As far as I know, I didn't actually check if there was a <laughs> preset to. Oh, <laughs> what do you know? Convert preset to integer. I should really do some more research before I do these tutorials. <laughs> All right, then we can just do this value um, store integer should be preset convert preset to integer my preset camera state for player and we can just drop this entire switch and we store it as an integer then I assume there will be a convert integer to preset no. How are you pulling it out again? That's a good question. Hmm. All right, I'm getting a bit out of the scope of, the, of this tutorial. Interesting. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at this for now. Perhaps the um, um, integer should be 1, 2, 3. If I'm correct, it might be 0, 1, 2, depending on how exactly this works. But whatever. It's not important. We're doing bank tutorial, not the. Uh, actually, let's just. I haven't used this before, so let's just. Sorry if that's allowed or not. Let's just reset this to this because this will work. Then we have it working. We don't have to worry about anything else. Well, apparently there might be an easier way to do this, but whatever. Okay, so we have our load and our save. So what we're going to do in the update camera, after this thing, we're going to store our camera. So we're going to run our store camera setting. And uh, we have should have the player ID parameter. There we go. We're just going to call this one. There's one thing we need to do at the end of this function. 
because this will update the setting and while you're in the game you can load it out again. However, if you want it to store to disk, you have to call save bank to actually save the bank to the disk. You can call this up often. It doesn't really take a lot to store one value to the disk. We're just going to call this up every time the camera changes and store it because you never know when the player's going to quit. So just store it after every time you make a change to the bank. And it's going to save the bank. So now every time the camera is updated, my bank should be saved. I have my banks folder open here. So I know it's a bit laggy when I launch a game from the editor, but just as a test, I'm going to do it while I still have my stream going. So let's just see how this works. It's probably very laggy for you, but eh, it's not so important for this tutorial. Alright, so I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to type camera far. I'm going to open my bank and you'll see my bank tutorial has been created. If I open it up, you can see how it's stored inside here. My section, my camera setting, and value is 2, which was the value that we set to far, as far as I recall. Let's see, store camera, far is 2. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go into the game again. I'm going to just type camera again. Now my notepad should detect that the file has been changed, and now it's 3 since it's close. Alright, so it's working. It's storing the values as we change it. So quit StarCraft again. Go back into the trigger window. Now I want to load this value from the bank on map startup. So I'm going to go into map init here. Here it updates the camera, so I obviously want to do it before I update the camera. I have to move the bank because we have to open the bank before we can load anything from it. Load the camera setting we can do by player ID. So I'm just going to go in here. And before we update the camera, I'm going to call load camera setting for the picked player. Alright. This should um, pretty much do it. So let's give it a try. I saved my camera at close. So the next one in the row should now be normal and my camera should be up close when we start the game. So let's see, I should probably not close StarCraft. Yeah, here we see my camera is up close. If I type camera, it changes to normal. So it's working now. If we just set it to... Alright, sorry about that. Um, I it turns out F10, which is the in-game key for the menu, is also the key that stops my recording. So I wanted to hit restart. I see that we're up to 17 minutes now. So I'm going to try to hurry it up to make this only a three-part tutorial. After I restart it, you will see that it's in the far setting as default. So let's just open the menu and minimize this and see if I can't get my triggers up again. Here we go. So yeah, that's a working bank. I will now summarize how it works. First, you have to open a bank with the preload, then open, and then store the bank to some variable, preferably array if you use multiple players.